Hello everyone and welcome to my podcast channel. My guest today is a successful YouTuber and startup founder. If you speak German, you've most likely already come across some of his awesome videos providing career advice for aspiring high performers. In this episode, we talk about sleep, productivity, and how David managed to build a company that is currently coaching almost 1,000 ambitious students. Enjoy the conversation. from uh, Stuttgart or? Schwabland, yes, yes, I'm from, well, my, my dad is from Stuttgart, my mom is like closer to Frankfurt actually, very close okay. to here. Um, so where exactly? It's uh, Leonberg. Le you know Leonberg? Are you kidding me? I'm from Gerlingen. Really? Yeah. No way. I was born in Leonberg. Seriously? Yeah. So my, my family, they're from, they're, most of them live in Van Bronn, which is like... But to be honest, like uh, from Leonberg to Stuttgart, it's uh, 30 minutes and from Leonberg to Frankfurt, it's two hours. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what's also really funny is so far, I have not yet seen a CV from one of our coaching members uh, who, who is from Gerlingen, <laughs> but I've seen uh, like a couple of CVs who are from uh, Leonberg. Oh, really? And because also like in, in but some interned in Gerling because it's the HQ of Bosch yeah. is located in Gerling. And next to Gerling, there's also Ditzingen and yeah. there is a Trumpf located. Huge and company. And some people are also interning at Trumpf. So. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing industry area, the whole, whole place. Yeah, yeah. I feel like people 100 years ago, there must have been so incredibly innovative. I mean, think about Bosch, Porsche, Daimler, uh, Trumpf, like so many companies yeah, yeah, are located yeah. there. Yeah. That's pretty it's cool. It's a hard working area. It's a, yeah, it's exactly. It's a very hard working area. And I can see that from like my grandparents, you know, their generation, they're very, very focused on like everything yeah, yeah, that they do. Definitely. But yeah. All right. Thank you, David, so much for being my podcast. Thank you, Samuel. Great having you here. For those who don't know, David, a very successful startup founder. Um, you work uh, about Pumpkin Careers, the name of your company. We have it here. The Beautifully displayed. <laughs> And I actually found out about you initially from all these German meme pages, Hedge von Henning, uh, BWL Justus, etc. If you speak German, you can have a look at them. They're really funny. And then at some point, I, I saw your YouTube channel. That was even before I intended to ever start with YouTube. And then my friend Niklas Steenfahrt, who a lot of you guys surely know, um, I, I know him from a language course in France. Mm -hmm. And then I saw at some point that you, you guys made a collaboration, which is yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. And I just thought, well, I mean, I want to reach out to you anyways, but then when I started, I said, okay, this, I have to do that. <laughs> I have to come here to Frankfurt to do this. Very nice to have you here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your office is beautiful, by the way. Thank you. have you. the beautiful Frankfurt skyline here. I'm not sure if you can see that in the background. And there's even a, uh, like a rooftop uh, terrace. Oh yeah, we must have amazing parties here. Too bad I'm, I'm leaving tonight, so we're not gonna have a big party here, but it looks so cool. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your background. Sure. I mean, it's very interesting. So your company is essentially coaching students from what age, like high school probably? I think our youngest clients are like 14 or 15. Oh, wow. And uh, some of them even start their studies at 16, so it's not uh, that big <laughs> of a deal, but still like in the, in the last years of, uh, of high school and then up to like, uh, in the master's degree before like uh, starting the full-time career in consulting, investment banking, private equity in the first mm -hmm. place. Yeah. So how come you, you chose these domains for coaching, consulting, private equity, investment banking? Well, it's like more or less on, based on my and my co-founder's own story. So mm -hmm. it was never like, okay, we have to, we have to do an own startup. Hmm, what's it, what would be a good idea? It was more like um, we also studied uh, business administration here in Frankfurt at Goethe University. And over there, it's, uh, more like over there. Oh yeah, this and way. Uh, like for me, for myself, um, when I started, I had no idea at all. Like mm -hmm. I watched with Wall Street. Uh, <laughs> I've heard some some of the big uh, bulge bracket banks, but besides from that, I didn't know KPMG. I didn't know PwC. I didn't know any of those uh, of those big firms. And uh, but when I started uh, at university, like a lot of uh, the fellow students. They talked about, yeah, you have to do an internship there and you have to do an internship there. And then uh, sooner or later, I started to, to, to also do some applications for internships and so on. Mm -hmm. And what I found out is that in all the internet and, and so on, there aren't, in my opinion, the, the best uh, tips on how to write a cover letter, how to write a decent CV, how to uh, perform in the, the interviews and so on, especially not uh, for German and especially not for like those high performance uh, 
business jobs. Mm -hmm. Like there are some basic tips, uh, what to say if someone asks you, what are your strengths, what are yeah. your weaknesses? But like, it's not, uh, okay, if you do an internship uh, for audit after your first semester, uh, you have to know this, 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 this. There was nothing like that. So I did uh, two internships, uh, one after my first semester, one of, after my second semester. After my second semester, I was there at the uh, UBS. Uh, <laughs> how it's uh, like uh, on my YouTube channel, it's a running gag because I say it like in, in every third video or so. <laughs> um, and there I was like, uh, I learned a lot about like the, the whole application process. And also none of my, of my friends from university landed such an internship. Like just mm -hmm. to give some references, uh, I was 19 at the time. Uh, one year after my uh, abitur, my high school diploma, and the other interns were like 26 and 27. Mm -hmm. uh, one was already in, in, in her master's degree, and all of them had a couple of internships uh, previously, and I was like n not that much of, of previous experience and so on. So I knew, okay, I know how to apply to decent jobs and so on. So I thought, okay, Nobody knows how to exactly apply to, to good jobs. I have made some learnings, so I wanted to help others and s started with a YouTube channel. So on this YouTube channel, I, I talked about how to uh, make a decent cover letter, how to make a decent CV, all of that, what I would have liked to see uh, at the beginning of my studies. And then uh, like, I did it uh, parallel to my, uh, to my studies. And then at the end of my studies, I. I founded the, the company together with my co-founder Jonas, who uh, did a lot of a lot more internships mm -hmm. than me because I stopped after the UBS uh, internship to, to focus on, on YouTube and, and coaching. And Jonas, he, he interned at like Roland Berger, it's the biggest German strategy consulting firm. He interned at uh, BCG mm -hmm. uh, and in a private equity firm. And then after our bachelor's degree, we said, okay, we can help so much others. I already had the, the social media following uh, back then of like 10,000 uh, like students. And then we started first with offline workshops. So we did workshops, for example, in Frankfurt and in Cologne. And they were really good, but like it was not scalable at all. Yeah. And it was like more or less a German, you would say, null summen spiel. Like there was no, no zero problem, sum game, yeah. zero sum game, yes. <laughs> And uh, then we thought, okay, we can do it better. And also, like, we, the, the workshop was like one day and we talked for 10 hours. We didn't have any voice uh, for the next three days. <laughs> and still we could have told them so, so much more. Mm -hmm. So then we thought, okay, we can do it better if we do it like online. So in uh, January, January 2020, we uh, founded our company, which uh, offers this coaching online based. So we have like... Uh, and then we started to, to also get other coaches. So what differentiates us from, I would say, other uh, coaching companies in, in other niches maybe, is that we also work together with uh, external coaches who work full time, for example, in investment banking, in strategy consulting, in private equity. And all of them are like making videos for our, uh, for our company. They do uh, calls with our, with our students and so on. And this is how it works, and that's pretty cool because uh, we can we can accompany our our clients for like months or even years. Some of them are with us from January 2020 until today, wow. so that's pretty cool. And also, you it's it's amazing to see how fast they progress because you have all the resources, like all the perfect resources you need. You know you can trust those resources. That's a big difference between you find something in in any uh, like blog article you yeah. don't know it, does it work doesn't it work and also our network is, is pretty good because uh, today we have like over 850 like clients mm -hmm. and all of them want to work in investment banking strategy consulting private equity so for example if you get an uh, invitation for an interview here in frankfurt in munich in berlin london uh, you can ask hey has anyone been there and you like easily find like five to 10 people who have interviewed at that firm exact same in place, the last yeah. like uh, two or three months. <laughs> you can have a chat with them, you know exactly uh, what questions will be asked and you, you know how to prepare perfectly for those inter, uh, interviews. And so that's why you have a big advantage if you're working with yeah. us. I think it's a lot about access to information. I yes. mean, back then, um, 
it was a lot dependent on what your parents do. Yes. If you want to land one of these top jobs, I mean, in theory, it's possible for everyone. Yeah. But in practice, it's much more easier if your parents work there. Right? Yeah, and they can tell you do an internship there, and then I can call this uh, old buddy of mine who you can yeah. get you into that and golf that. partner and all yeah. that stuff. But the cool thing is, you share most of the information, even for free. I mean, your YouTube channel is full of yeah. free information. You don't have to pay for that. Yeah. And then young people who you know have big dreams and big ambitions and actually go to that material, even without having you know been lucky to be born in such a family that has yeah. the connections you can land these careers yes. with hard work, obviously. Yes. What do you say for these young people who are interested in these, in these careers? So not just from Germany, but like internationally, what are like the most important things to focus on? Well, I think internationally, it's even more important, first of all, to focus on getting into a preferably uh, top tier university. Mm -hmm. Like it is not necessary at all. That's really something important. Sometimes people think I say, uh, you have to be in a top tier <laughs> university and if you don't, you can never land a job. That's totally not true. Mm -hmm. But it is much more easier if you start your studies at a top tier university, especially in the bachelor. If you don't, uh, then it's fine, you, but it's a little bit more harder. Like it's you have to work a little 20, bit more than, yeah. 30, 40, 50% more harder. Yeah. So, and if you would have put in that hard work, if you study at a top tier university, you would get an even better job. So that's maybe the first thing. And it's, it's all already important in, in Germany where we have really good uh, public uh, universities. But I think it's even more uh, important in, in other uh, international countries. Secondly, I would say uh, that they should inform the, themselves about different job opportunities as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Because I think, uh, of course, it's always, uh, always important to be open-minded. To, to look around, uh, look at that job opportunity, look at that job opportunity. But if you focus already at, the, at an really early stage in your studies, you can do all the right steps in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then you get so much, uh, so much faster uh, into that direction instead of trying out this, trying out this, trying out this, trying out this. And then like all the people use, uh, who don't do that uh, use the excuse that they say, yeah, I have to try it all by myself. But to be honest, it's not that hard via the internet, for example, to find like so many uh, people who have worked there, who have worked there, who have worked there, have a chat with them, yeah. uh, ask them, what, what do you like about your job? What don't you like? Maybe you can tell me about your routine. What are the, like the, the career expectations I can have when I work there? Mm -hmm. And so on. Then I think a lot of people neglect that. But if you do that, you can, like, from the beginning of your studies, can focus into one direction. And I think that's a really big advantage. And the, because you asked for three tips, I would say the, the, the third one <laughs> is like, uh, you have to uh, be willing to work hard. Yeah. No matter what, like even you, we, we, uh, we talked yeah. about that in a, in a previous video on my channel. Like uh, if you work in a hedge fund, it's not like those crazy 80, 80 90 hours you have at some of those uh, investment banking firms. But still, you worked those crazy hours in order to get the knowledge you need for those. That's actually products. true. So yeah. uh, like I see a lot of people in our generation who think, yeah, uh, you, you can get rich or you can get successful by like, just from your phone 20, 20 minutes a day. And that yeah. might be true for like one out of 10,000 people. Uh, but uh, for the rest, it's like hard work, stick to a good plan and just like uh, don't, don't, if it doesn't work out for, for two weeks, uh, don't stop, but keep going. It's interesting. I mean, the focus of your company is investment banking, consulting, et cetera. But you're essentially a startup founder now, yeah, right? Yeah. Which, which, is, which is kind of cool. Um, so what were like the big challenges when you started this company? You said in January, so it was just pre-COVID. Yeah, you yeah. actually started your company, I think. Perfectly into COVID. That was yeah. like... <laughs> I started four months, out, oh. three months after you. <laughs> yeah, so um, like one of those, one big thing is uh, like the opportunity cost we had. Because mm -hmm. like uh, you, just finished your you just finished your bachelor and you say, okay, I take the risk and do a, like, found a startup and like in a coaching niche, it's mm -hmm. not like, uh, like we have uh, 20 million VC funding yeah. or something like that, but it's like a more of a bootstrap approach. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we expected to have uh, 
uh, 15 uh, employees in, in the first three months. Yeah. So uh, like it was more like of a risk and because we had like huge opportunity costs. Uh, I mean, you know how much you can yeah. uh, earn in uh, strategy consulting, investment banking and so on. It was like that was maybe a hard decision, but at the same time I thought to myself, okay, if not now, then I will never do it probably. Because once you started your career, once you get comfortable uh, to that uh, to that uh, yearly paycheck and so on, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's also a little bit hard. So it's, yeah. it shouldn't be an excuse not to not to start an own startup. And then it was for me, it was never like a decision not to go into those typical career paths, mm -hmm. but more to okay. I think that ultimately. Uh, you can have the most impact and also have the, the best opportunities for your own development, for your financial development and so on as a successful startup founder. Ob it's not that obvious, but yeah. uh, if you're really successful, the thing is what I see most uh, or, or what I see a lot of people do is uh, they want to start an own company mm -hmm. no matter what. <laughs> and for us, like it was more of a natural approach. We tried those workshops. They worked really good. All the people said, amazing workshops. Can we have more of that? And then we said, okay, let's do it online. And then, okay, uh, it was all, uh, an even, even bigger success. And then we started to hire the first interns. And it, like, we, we, knew, we, we realized, okay, we can scale this thing. Then we hired our first full-time employees. We got into our first office and so on. So it was more of a natural approach. And uh, I think that was something that really benefited us yeah. uh, because you uh, asked about COVID. We, so we founded the company in 2020 in January. We all already started in August uh, 2019 with all those workshops and mm -hmm. so on. And then we got our first office in, I think it was May, like in February and March, COVID came to Europe <laughs> and everyone thought, okay, it's like, uh, the new plague, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we head into a, like a really hard uh, recession and so on. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't happen uh, yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, so for like two months, it was like a lot of uh, insecurity also mm -hmm. on the job market, like a lot of internships got canceled. But then luckily for us, like it all, uh, it uh, it went back up again, yeah. and uh, and also online, like working online. Yeah, I think this really benefited yeah. us. Like all the yeah. students, they were used to get into Zoom meetings and so on from university. So that was like a really bad, big benefit. But we still said, okay, we want to uh, in in May or June. I don't remember exactly when we got our first office. Like from that then on, we said, okay, as much as possible, we want to work from from the office because. Uh, it's much more fun to have like uh, some some good colleagues around you yeah. are also are, like your friends and you're not working like 14 hours from your one uh, one room apartment uh, next to your bed and your uh, your yeah your not so comfortable <laughs> chair and so on so uh, getting into the our first office was a big step for us oh yeah for sure i mean you told me that your first office was just around the corner yeah that's really funny yeah the next one was bigger and now you're in the third office yeah which is so beautiful i mean we're not going to do a tour but i'm sure you can check it out on, on david's channel i'm sure you're going to do a tour have you done it already i think we, uh, we've done do, uh, two tours but they were both when it was not uh, uh, ready like on the furnished furnished it's still not uh, 100 percent <laughs> furnished uh, luckily for us we, you don't see the rest of the room on the camera <laughs> Uh, but uh, I think like in one or two months, uh, we have everything we ordered and then we'll definitely do a lot of room tours. Oh yeah, amazing. And I think one thing that, that I really like about your company, so most companies, they just you know do whatever business they do and then they have a social media strategy. Mm -hmm. You built your company in a way that was not even possible to think about like 10 years ago. You yeah. built it out of social media. You had a YouTube channel that is still seems to be like a very core basis of information and the cool thing is it's your personal youtube because it's more relatable right yeah company social media always you know yeah. they can perform well but now you're a person you have a name you have a face so people are more attached to that and i think it's really fascinating that you managed to build a company in a way that i'm, I'm sure if you ask anyone for advice it was like you know 30 plus probably they would have never told you that you can do yeah, that sure sure yeah. How did you even get the idea to, to do the YouTube channel in the first place? Well, I, I, I had a friend who started a, a YouTube channel like one or two years earlier. Mm -hmm. And he focused on uh, like high school, uh, like okay. high school uh, tips for getting better grades at high school more or mm -hmm. less. And he was really successful. 
And then uh, we talked and he asked me, hey, David, what's like, what are your strengths? Like, what could you offer maybe someone? So uh, then I thought about it. It was like at my first year at university. I, it was even before my first internship. And then mm. I thought, hey, I, I learned so much about like job application for the last couple of weeks because I, I researched so much. Mm -hmm. I, I ordered all those uh, application books from Amazon. <laughs> I went to workshops from companies and so on. And I, I always thought, okay, you can do that a little bit more better. You can do that a little bit more better. And then I thought, okay, like, my knowledge compared to the knowledge of like the the typical high school student it's like a big difference big yeah. difference so yeah and then the plan was that i start a youtube channel and like offer like a, a video course for his audience so that uh, like uh, high school students who want to get into a traineeship mm -hmm. like an industrial company or something they would come to me and get the, uh, get obviously better uh, tips for how to write an application and how to perform in assessment centers and so on uh, compared to like other high school students mm -hmm. who only work on the tips of their parents or high school yeah. uh, teachers or so. And uh, that was the idea, but somehow like it, uh, it, it didn't uh, like uh, perform that good. Yeah. Like, the, the product was really good. The, the people who, who booked the, the video course, they had really great success. And also my subscribers had really great success. But I like, I had an initial hype for the first couple of two weeks. And then I had like 1000 subscribers. But after that, like I, I, I refreshed YouTube two times a day. And like one times I had one subscriber more. So it was like for one year, basically no, no views. At, and I put so much effort into those videos, like uh, the best tips for intern uh, interviews and so on. And it was so good. And everyone who watched those videos said, whoa, it's amazing <laughs> tips. But like the niche was, I think it was too big because mm -hmm. some of my clients then uh, with whom I worked like over, over the studies until I started working together with my co-founder Jonas, like some of them were like high school students. Some of them were even business administration students, but some of them were physics students who wanted to land an internship like at a really technical company <laughs> and some of them like were 45 year old guys <laughs> like it was really no niche at all and that like i mean they were all uh, satisfied mm -hmm. and i earned some a little bit of money uh, parallel to my studies but i always i wasn't so like secure about it because i thought hmm, yeah. I have this, uh, I had really good grades. I landed those really good internships. I had a few scholarships. Like I was really on the track of getting into a really good career. And then I do lo those like low, low price, low, yeah. low, low level, like uh, application tips with random people. And there's no big plan behind it. So I was like parallel to my studies. I, I uploaded like once or twice a month a new YouTube video, but it didn't work out really good. And then once I, I uploaded a video called like what I would li have liked to know before beginning my business administration uh, studies. Yeah. And that video like blew up. It is until today, I think my most viewed uh, video, it's like not uh, 2 million views. It's like 180,000 views That's or so, still, but it's still like Germany, yeah. in this niche in Germany, it's yeah. uh, like, uh, I think a lot of people who study uh, business administration have seen that video and then I realized, okay, this niche in, because I'm also doing that niche, like mm -hmm. all of my buddies, they work at uh, like banks, asset manager, um, asset management firms, consulting firms and so on. I'm, I'm studying business administration. I can also give like tips for, for how to get good grades, how to get into scholarships. Mm -hmm. And then I, I started talking about that stuff on my YouTube channel. I, I interviewed uh, like people who, who worked at consulting firms, like who work in uh, big firms and so on. And then the channel became more, became, uh, more and more successful. And then we had those, that following of 10,000 subscribers more or less when we, we, we started our company. Amazing. This is a super like, interesting story. It was story. really like a lot of uh, randomness involved in that process <laughs> uh, until today. Um, yeah, but maybe that's what it what it takes sometimes. Oh yeah, you know one thing that I'm also always thinking about it's a lot about who you surround yourself with. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of randomness involved, but you can always 
behave in a way that you maximize the probability of good sure, things happening. Definitely. And good things happen if you surround yourself with you know, ambitious, inspiring people, right? Definitely. I mean, I'm sure, well, your, your co-founder, you met your co-founder because you were hanging out with people who are ambitious, right? Sure. And it was the same thing for me, my co-founder, also very ambitious. I started at EPFL and he seemed like the most you know, inspiring person that I met there, Alexander. And then we ended up starting a company. He actually pressured me to starting it. I never wanted to have a business. Yeah. But now here I am and I realized it's like the coolest thing ever. Because I see on your daily basis, you do so many things. I mean, your social media, now I have a TikTok that's even bigger than your YouTube. You, you travel around, it seems like the, you know, kind of a dream for anyone who has a startup, right? Yeah, it depends. I think uh, like uh, it maybe it looks uh, a little bit cooler on social media um, because it's always like, like that. also like uh, doing like uh, events with uh, with students and so on. Uh, like it's it's a lot of stress involved also, and uh, like uh, you you can't have uh, you have also like a lot of um, responsibility yeah. for your clients for your. Uh, employees uh, for for also like b2b clients we also work with oh, yeah. big uh, consulting firms investment banks and so on so it's not like uh, just fun yeah but uh, like we try to make it look as if it's just fun but we also yeah. like uh, also talk about like it's uh, also hard work involved because i think none of uh, our subscribers thinks that you can like launch a successful startup without right. hard work and, yeah uh, that's totally true. I think that's normal. I mean, you know, I, I spend most of my days in my office working, but when yeah. I post an Instagram story, yeah, it's like exactly. One day, like yeah. I don't, I don't post like uh, how I uh, how I work on my on my MacBook for like ten hours straight, yeah. uh, or how I sit in my bed at like uh, 12, uh, 12 in the in the night and still like uh, answer emails because it's pretty boring. Yeah. Uh, so I, I rather post like when I'm on on our uh, balcony or if I'm like eating out in, in Frankfurt or something yeah. like that because it's just like makes more fun also and mm -hmm. uh, a few more questions how much do you sleep how much do you work how much vacation do you take like I sleep <laughs> uh, like in, during my during universities I always try to sleep at least eight hours smart nowadays I sleep like between five to seven hours oh, wow. mostly and like I'm still feeling really refreshed to be honest like I'm drinking like coffee three times per week maybe oh per like week I, it's not per yeah, day no 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 no, no. <laughs> so I, I i i had a time when we started or when we moved into our first uh, office before that i rarely drank a drink uh, drink drank coffee but when we moved into our first office we had like a great coffee machine oh, and then i perfect. realized after like two or three months that i was really addicted to coffee <laughs> because like uh, in the morning, I always drink a coffee, and then after lunch, also a coffee. And one day, that machine was broken. It's a disaster. And I, I was like running around, like <laughs> I need to have a coffee, otherwise I can't like do, get any work done. And then I was, oh, oh, that's not good. But I, uh, like, uh, I kept going. But then we moved into our, our in our into our first like real office, into our mm -hmm. second office. Because the first office was more like like a co-working space. Yeah. We didn't have to care about anything. And when we worked into our second office, like there wasn't anything there at all. And of course, we geniuses, we didn't think about all, uh, ordering internet. So we didn't have. <laughs> we we plugged into we plugged our router into the like the the LAN uh, or into the the thing that's uh, out of the, the wall. And we thought, okay, where's the internet? Where does it come and from? And then we realized. Then we have to have to call uh, telecom, and then we have to we wait like for two weeks to get oh, internet. No. And also there was no coffee machine, and because it was in an industrial complex, there were were no restaurants, no coffee coffee shops or anything in the area. Oof. So like for one week, I had like a cold. How do you say like uh, from zero uh, from one hundred to zero cold turkey style, no caffeine at all. Oof. And then like for two or three days, I was like completely exhausted, completely tired for the whole day. And after that, I feel as good as previously on two coffees a day. And that was the first time I realized, okay, caffeine is like, you shouldn't be dependent at all. Mm -hmm. And then now I, I start cycling caffeine. So like uh, I have a couple of weeks where I sleep less and then I drink one or two coffees a day. But like today i also drank a coffee because i wanted uh, didn't sleep so much and i was yeah. performing those uh, videos with you but like for the next couple of days i won't drink uh, caffeine because i don't want to get dependent on it
You know what? I just realized I'm completely addicted to coffee. I drink three coffees a day. That's not good, dude. And in five years, you're going to need five uh, to feel the same. Well, you know, my I friends, they, they, my friends, they drink five a day. Yeah, and that's the problem. Like, like, it's, like, it's completely accepted to be normal, but... Uh, and now that I think about it, what it just told me, like, I freak out that I don't have my yeah, coffee. That's like exactly the wrong, the wrong thing. I just realized that live on camera that I'm an addict. <laughs> Thank, yeah, you, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> okay, I'm moving to Switzerland now. Actually, I'm going there tonight. I won't have a coffee machine in the apartment. That's, that's a good uh, thing to start with. I already obsessively thought about which one I'm going to buy, but maybe, maybe I should wait for just one week yeah. to see if I'm like really yeah. addicted. <laughs> I think you are. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah. So speaking of coffee, I should probably have one more for the rest of the day because I'm super tired. I arrived here like at 2 a.m. in the morning. And you already drank a coffee, right? For I already me, had a coffee. If I drink one coffee, like after a two week uh, no coffee, it's like uh, Pony Montana, right? Do you feel it? Uh, I don't feel yeah, it's anymore. amazing. It's amazing. Really, you feel so amazing. And if you go like hit the gym, it's so amazing. But like, I remember like, five or six months ago when I was like drinking two coffees a day, like after a few days, you need it to yeah. be fully awake. Now I'm fully awake even if I, like to, tonight I, I track my sleep with like an app. We can, uh, we can have a look at it right now live. Um, it's called Sleep Psyche. You, you can screen record it if you so want So it's to. like five, uh, yeah, I can uh, screen record it. It's like, it wakes you up. So you, you put in here, I want to wake up between like, uh, 5.55 and 6.25. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do, did to, today. And it woke me up, like it listens to your sleep, it listens to your breathing, and it wakes you up when you're the most awake. So you know that you have those different sleep cycles. So that really works? It's amazing. Like it's, uh, it's a tip from an investment banker. I got it like in, in my second, second year at university mm -hmm. and it's amazing. I slept for five hours. I drank a coffee, but I wouldn't have needed the coffee. Yeah. Yesterday I slept like six, 34 minutes. But how does it know then if you're I, on, Look here, I, I, I slept four hours 45 in the, in the previous night and I'm like, I don't look tired. No, right? not at all, yeah. I'm like impressed. I'm also looking uh, a lot at like nutrition and so on, but I think that like at university, I would have never thought that I, would, I could like perform at four or five hours of sleep. You know, that, David, you're, you're the, probably one of the most efficient people I ever met. So it takes me two and a half days to make my videos. He said, okay, we have like two thirds of a day, essentially. He said, we're going to make five videos. And I thought that's impossible. But now I see it as actually possible. If you just like go very quickly, uh, you know what you're going to say. You're confident on camera. Your cameraman explained me how to film properly. I think I learned so much today. It's crazy. You learned about your caffeine addiction. Oh yeah, I discovered it. I'm an addict. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that my, uh, my English skills for the German audience will write funny comments in the, uh, in the, in the comment section, sh sure. Uh, like, Please uh, let me explain. Uh, like I don't have to talk in English at all. The last, for I, I talked a lot of uh, English in my UBS internship, and then in the end of 2017 in my uh, like exchange semester. But after that, I don't have to talk any English at all. So yeah. So that is why I speak uh, well, really German English. Schwäbisch <laughs> English. Yes, no, actually, it's, it sounds very good, I have to say. I, I have some people, I'm not going to name them, they're from Schwabenland as well. And you can hear in their English, like, not just that they're from that part of Germany, you can probably hear which town they're from. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. Like, we also have, like, a famous politician uh, from, like, a nearby town uh, whom uh, I, I know. And he was also in the, like, some... European uh, like commission or something like a mm -hmm. really it was really uh, like a, a high, big, up. Uh, high up position and his English was so funny <laughs> and uh, yeah especially in the older generation I think for them it's r even harder like for us I, I we, we start uh, like speaking English in like fourth or fifth grade I think mm -hmm. and then you have all those opportunities to talk in English when you're growing up you watch those English films and so on you read those books but like the older generation when they have to begin studying English at like 25 or so because their career uh, mm -hmm. needs it from them, then for them it's maybe a little bit harder. Yeah, but it's important. I mean, important, I feel yes. like if you do not, you don't have to speak accent-free English, but if you are not able to communicate semi-fluently and yeah. understand English, I think that's like the first thing probably you should focus yeah, yes, on yes. because that unlocks access to, well, you know, literally billions of people yes, and yes. information, information, exactly, yeah. 
That's so that's so fascinating. Thank you so much for, for being you. in my podcast. Thank it was a real so pleasure being in your office in Frankfurt for the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to check out the other episodes which David and I recorded during my stay in Frankfurt in German. I will link them as soon as they are published. Also, make sure to subscribe to David's channel on YouTube and TikTok. Speaking of TikTok, I just created my own TikTok account so you can follow me there too. I plan on becoming more active as well. If you enjoyed this conversation, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos coming out. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Until next time. Goodbye.